Good evening, everyone who is on both the Zoom line and on the uh, phone line. It is good to be on tonight with those of you who are gathered here tonight. It is good to see all of you all who I, we saw today and we were able to fellowship together uh, and hear the word. It is a prayer uh, that we continue to do that uh, in, in the days to come. Um, tonight, we're in our expectation moment. And um, this is, well, Mother Vaughn is not on, so I can't get a good number. I think it's 1,308. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are here today uh, for the purpose of continuing living expectation. We understand now um, that to have faith is to live in expectations. Living expectation requires us to have faith. We know that. And so let us keep that in mind. Let us not uh, just use the verbiage, but let us apply the reality of the context to our lives. Uh, we're going to open in prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come this day, Lord, once and again, just to say thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for all of your grace and thank you for all of your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you heard our prayers. We thank you, Lord, that you've answered our prayers. We thank you, Lord, for the fact, Lord, that you've called us to be your children. And we thank you, Lord, that you didn't do that in a vacuum, but you called us to be your children, Lord, uh, empowered us with the Holy Spirit that we can do your will, giving us the clarity of your will in, our, in your word and understanding, Lord, that we have a destiny, Lord, in your presence. Uh, we have your power and your provision in our presence. And we thank you, Lord, that to live by faith, to walk by faith, Lord, is what guarantees us to experience all that you have. I pray, God, tonight that you give me out, feel me up, Holy Spirit, Lord, as we open up your word and, and again seek to take action in the book of Acts. Bless and keep us now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tonight we're in the book of Acts, chapter 12. And I'm not gonna hold you long, I promise. Um, but I do want us to just touch on what we got. In fact, as I count, I see we got eight, that's eight more call to actions left in the book of Acts, uh, give or take. And so I'm grateful for us being able to be on. Mother Vaughn, I'm glad you. I was worried about you. I was about to call you. Uh, you you're very rather late. So but I'm sorry, I won't put a letter in your file for that. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. You're muted. I, I can't hear you. All right, we'll get you at the end of, in the class, but we're glad you're on. That's the main thing. I'm glad you okay. So tonight we're in the book of Acts chapter 12. And um, this is this chapter takes place on the very heels of, of the, first of all, the, and we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school today. It takes place shortly after uh, Peter had, um, had gone to Caesarea, where there was a great number of Gentiles who were saved. It takes place even closely following um, Peter going to Jerusalem to talk to the council, the leaders and the elders in the church to explain to them why he went to Caesarea and most of all, why he um, baptized Gentiles in Caesarea. Um, as you remember, after Peter gave his testimonies to what God had done and say, had said to him and what God had revealed to him in a vision or a dream, uh, Peter then went on to remind uh, all of those who were gathered there, the fact that Jesus, uh, the fact that Jesus had told them during his earthly ministry that he would pour out his uh, spirit upon everyone. And so he showed that in Caesarea that that was the fulfillment of the prophecy or the promise that God that the Lord had given him during his earthly ministry. Um, he baptized, and as a result, those people and uh, those leaders and those elders in Jerusalem accepted it and they rejoiced. Um, because God was able and is able to save everyone. And so immediately after that, the Bible says that chapter 12, that's where we are, chapter 12, that uh, there was a great persecution of the uh, persecution of the believers um, in the city. King Herod, um, who, like his forefathers, never had any desire or or, or, or never had any purpose, never saw any need for God in his life. This man, uh, King Herod, um, simply moved out of on, on things that were self. Uh, he was only aware of himself. He was only did things that benefited himself. And so he realized that in Jerusalem, um, there were Jews who really didn't like the Christians, uh, hated the Christians. And he realized that if he persecuted them, that he would have great favor or at least popularity, I should say, um, with those Jews in the city. And so just as a test run, he put James, he killed James, the brother of John, and put him to death with the sword. And when he saw the response of the Jews, the people, um, of, because of his hatred toward and his, his behavior toward um, James, he decided that he would then uh, seize Peter. At the time, and I got to think it's important to give this, 
at the very time of this, Peter was probably the most important Christian in the world at the time. Um, he had spoken on the day of Pentecost, and he'd been used in many mighty ways um, during the course of his ministry. He'd gone before the Sanhedrin on more than one occasion. And the Sanhedrin, of course, had no authority uh, other than to, to discipline him by whipping him, but he counted that even a blessing. And so the the the, the persecution, the prosecution um, got stronger. So let me pause here and say this. That is something I always remember. When you're doing the work of the will of God and the enemy sees he cannot um, um, depress you, dissuade you, uh, cause you to give up, then his his elevation or he'll change tactics. And I, I Deacon uh, Thomas, I remember Deacon um, Downey said, Lou, that word tactics. He'll go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and strategize on how he can, that's the word you strategize, strategize and strategies on how he can, can break us and how he can stop us from doing the work of the will of God. Now, let me say this. Don't be afraid about that. Don't be afraid about that. I was watching a college football game yesterday. It was a big upset. And the coach um, was interviewed after the game. He said, this team was so much better than you. There was seemingly no way you could win. Um, uh, how do you, how do you think you won this game? And the coach said, we were never afraid because we knew what we had. I want each of us as Christians to do the same thing. We shouldn't be afraid about opposition, about persecution, about trials and tribulations, because we know what we got. And what we got is not us. What we got is who's in us. God is in us. The Lord is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. John said in 1 John, great is he that is in us and he that is in the world. And so we have no need to fear. Matter of fact, the praise team sing that song sometimes is very neat. We have no reason to fear. The Lord is our life. Uh, and, and as a result of that, um, Peter, when he was persecuted by uh, King Herod, was not afraid. The Bible says they put Peter in prison. They arrested him. They handed over four squads and four soldiers to take to 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 keep him out, or keep him in jail, because they knew that uh, Peter had a propensity to be released by the Spirit of God. And for whatever reason, Herod, because he had no understanding of God, thought that somehow or another he could be victorious. The enemy still feels the same way. He thinks and he hijacks people who think that they got the power. But we've got to understand that power is always in the Lord's hands. It always has been, always will be in the hand, in the power, in the hand of our God. So they put Peter in prison, verse 5, and the Bible lets us know that the church was earnestly praying, praying for him. They were earnestly praying for God to him. They were earnestly praying rather to God for him. Let me Can I, can I pause for a minute and go down a, a, a street? The day when we prayed for the young lady, Angel, we prayed um, because she's in a level of prison. And I, I think she would mind me saying this because I, I, I want us to live in this expectation of God's going to do something great in a, in a prison of some sort. May, not a physical prison, but a, a spiritual, emotional prison. Prison, And our prayer should always be that those people who are in a prison of some sort, whether it be because of situation, circumstance, illness, whatever, that we pray to God on their behalf for them. That's part of our work. Um, to be an intercessor, to go to God on behalf of others. That's our work. All right, now keeping that in mind, the, the, the church, the church, the body of Christ prayed for Peter while he was in prison. They could have cried. They could have lamented. They could have looked at the judicial code and said, we'll never see Peter again. Somebody could have gave up and said, Peter's going to get killed by this guy here because Herod just killed James. But they did none of that. They did not look at the impossibilities. I wish I could get me on. They looked at the possibilities because of who they served. Y'all see, they said, we serve God. So we ain't going to worry about Herod, we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna trust God. We're gonna put it in God's hands. And therein, I can really stop right here. Therein lies the, the the challenge and the solution to our troubles in our lives and in the lives of others. Praying to who? Praying to God. Pray to God on behalf of somebody who's in trouble. If you're in trouble, pray to God on your behalf. Intercede for yourself. A Bible says David encouraged himself. The Lord, call on God. Call on God and know that He has. He is the only one that has the ability to bring us out. Imagine this. When you in, guess who can bring you out? God can bring you out. The Bible said they kept praying for him. And the night before Herod was to bring him to trial. So it lets us know there was a period of time. This is what happened during that period of time. While they had Peter in prison, guess what? They kept praying. They didn't stop praying. They kept praying to the point where they were praying even the night before Herod was to bring him to trial. Peter was on death row. They wanted to kill Peter. They had demonstrated they had the wherewithal to kill somebody because they had killed James. And so the night before, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. I know I said this last time, but I love the fact that Peter went to sleep. And that's what happens when you uh, are praying to God and somebody's praying on your behalf. You can just go ahead and go to sleep. Can you go, can you go to sleep? You can just you can just go ahead and just relax and rest. He was sleeping between the two soldiers. They were bound with chains. And then people were standing guard at the entrance. At that moment, two things were happening. Prayer on Peter's behalf. 
And then an angel came suddenly and appeared in the cell. The angel went past the guards. The angel went past the sentries. The angels went past those who were sleeping on either side. And he got in front of Peter. And only Peter was aware. Now, somebody could say, well, you know, the angels didn't come that way. They just came from heaven. That works for me, too. The angels just appeared in the cell. However it happened, what I do know is God interceded. How many know God intercede? He'd get involved. How many, how many say he got involved in the situation you're in? He'll get involved. God doesn't just sit high. He sits high. He looks low. You know, just look low. He gets involved in our situations. His hands are always on the hands of those who he loves. Now, he, the, the angel goes in, woke Peter up, told Peter to get up, and guess what? The chains fell off. I was talking to somebody at the church day, and they said, I believe that that, girl, that lady's going to be delivered. And I said, oh, really? I said, I, and I, I thought about it. I said, well, I do too. So he said, no, I'm serious. He said, I felt the spirit of God. He said, I burst into tears. And I don't know why. He said, I just burst into tears, he said, because I believe that God is moving. I want us to have that expectation that God, that when we're praying it, that it's already happening. I believe over there in the church that when they were praying for Peter, that they were already in belief and in, in, in trusting and believing that God was going to do what? Bring them out. And so as a result, the Bible lets us know that it happened. It changed the life of Peter. Uh, the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. Peter did so. He, he put his coat around him and he left. And, angel, and Peter followed the angel out of prison. A, he didn't know what I, uh, the angel was going, but he knew it was God. He kept walking. He thought he was seeing a vision, but he kept walking. They passed the first God. He kept walking. They passed the second God. He kept walking. They came to the gate outside of the jail. They led to the city. He kept walking. Why? Because of Open for a open for the gates open by itself. He went through it. They walked down the street, and Peter kept on walking. The angel left, but guess what? Peter kept on walking. I want us to know, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say tonight. When you trust God, when you can intercede on somebody's behalf, when you can intercede on your behalf, you're serving a God who can bring you out. There are two things we have to do: be obedient and just keep on going. Keep on going. What does that mean? Keep on praying. What does that mean? Keep on trusting. What does that mean? Keep on serving. What does that mean? Keep on reading his word. What does that mean? Keep on praising. Keep on worshiping. Just keep on going and watch how God will bring us out. Let me say this. I was talking to somebody. They said, well, you know, Lord brought me out of something, but, you know, you can't. You, that's a limited number of times for God bring you out. And I was forward. I said, why would an unlimited God have a limited number of times he can bring you? Why would a God who made the whole earth with some time to spare and rested on the seventh day, be limited about what he can do. I say the same thing in 2023, God can bring us out of every situation as we call upon his name, as we trust in him, and as we keep on going in our faith, in our reliance, and our dependence on him. I'm going to stop there, but that's what I want us to understand. We serve a God who will bring us out. As a matter of fact, this time, let's tie this and bring us out, bring us out. God will bring us out. There's no situation in which you can't. All we got to do is be aware, willing, obedient, and diligent. I thank God for those of you who tuned in tonight. I'm going to let y'all take the rest of the evening off. But I thank God for you. And again, I thank God. Mother Vaughn, tell me how many days we've been on now. It's one, uh, one three, zero, three, nine, That's why y'all had it right. I believe 1,309 days we have been on Bible study. And in those 1,309 days, guess what? We have fully experienced how to live in expectation for the Lord. And so I thank God for you all who have been on almost 1,309 days. I thank God for those who have been on, even if it's your first day. Let us keep on. Just like Peter kept on going outside the city, let us keep on going that we may experience what God has for us. Deacon Elvis sing this song all the time. I believe I run on. Sometimes it might not be the run, but we keep on walking and see what the end going to be. Because guess what we know? Something. At the end, he's waiting on us. God bless y'all. Let us be encouraged in the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you so much. We thank you. Mm. We thank you so much. We praise you so much. We honor you so much, Lord, because you truly have been good to us. We pray tonight, God, that you let us not only have heard this word, but let us rely on it. It's, it's veracity, it's truth. Let us download into our hearts. Let it get in our feet. That we can do just what Peter did. Whenever it seems like we're backed up, a, a, a trapped that we know, Lord, that you will bring us out. I pray, God, you bless every household, every family, every individual Christian tonight. Then, God, beyond that, I pray, God, that you let this word, this particular word and all the word we studied, but let this word get in our hands and feet that we can serve you better than we've ever served you before. God, let your word get in our hearts that we may be strengthened in our inner person. God, let your word get 
in our ears that we can hear your your words over the winds and the waves of the world. Lord, let your word get on our minds. And then in our minds, we might have peace that surpasses all understanding and that the fiery darts are saved to be cleansed. God, let your word get on our lips, tongues, vocal, and lungs, and throat. That we can declare your word to a dying world, then to each other, and finally to ourselves. God, I do pray that you would give us peace and joy. And let us experience your grace and your mercy. And finally, God, I do pray tonight that you, Lord, by your love and power, would allow us, Lord, to pray without ceasing, to rejoice evermore. And then, Lord, let us give you thanks in all things. Again, Lord, build a hedge protection around us that the fire darts to Satan be quenched. And God, I pray that you'd help us to never quench your Holy Spirit, but help us to be led, guided, and empowered and strengthened by your Holy Spirit. God, we love you. We do. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hold on, Zoom line. God bless you, phone line. God bless your phone line. All recording is off. Amen. Amen. Let's see. We got a good. We got a good Sunday, the Sunday night group, Zoom group. Y'all on fire. We put a letter in everybody's yes. file tonight. Everybody get a letter. Uh, God mm -hmm. bless you. <laughs> Digging the Reverend Edwards. God bless you. God bless Sister you. Wood, yes. God bless you. Thank you. Mother, Mother Vaughn, God bless you. Sister Lena God Lewis, God bless you. you. God bless you, Pastor. Digging and Digging this Thomas, God bless y'all. Sister Simpson, God bless you. Sister Boyd, God bless you. God bless Lee King, you. Lee King, you're on a little late, but God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Roxanne, God bless you. Sister Reese, God bless you. And Deacon, that's very neat. God bless you all. I love y'all, and i see y'all tomorrow. Double time. Double time. Yes, ma'am. Good night, yes, everyone. While you're on the line, I'm right here with my sister in Chicago. It's been hey, six. Sisters. Yeah. Can you pray for us? Yeah, I can. I can. What's your sister's name? Emma. Emma Brown. Yeah. Oh, Emma Brown. Okay, let's pray for Sister Brown. In the, in the specific thing we're praying about, we're just praying for her and her family. Healing. Healing. That's it. We got it. Yes, sir. Yes. And we, don't need, we don't need a report. We just know what we know who to call on. We yes, know who to heal. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name is again, Lord, that we come with the full recognition, God, that you are a healer. We know. <laughs> we know this, that by your stripes that we are healed. And we pray, God, for two things. First of all, Lord, that uh, Sister Emma, Lord, we ask God that she, as, she, as she has a relationship with you, you strengthen it. If she does, she get it. But more importantly, Lord, we ask God that you draw her closer to you, Lord, that you would put your healing hand on her the same way you've done time and time again, Lord, that you would heal her and that she may be a testimony, not just for her, Lord, so that others may know today in 2023, you are a healer. God, we know that you know the report. We know that you know what doctors have said, but now, Lord, we put it in your hands because we know, God, you are a doctor that's never lost a patient. Never you are lost. a doctor, Lord, that is able to do everything and, and, and it's by your power. There's no need for a Lord to commit it, but you're able to do it alone. And so I ask God that you guard her mind and heart in this series, this season, Lord, that she may know you better and be drawn closer to you. And I pray, God, you bless her sister and her family, Lord, all those who trust and believe in you, Lord, that you let them, Lord, rest assured. Uh, Lord, that you are able to bring her even now out of this circumstance and situation. God, it is in Jesus' name we say thank you and amen. 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 Bless you, Sister Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Everybody thank have a good all. night. Everyone. Good night. Love you all. Thank you. Bless. Have a blessed day. Everybody be blessed. See you in the right. morning on the prayer line. 7 8. <laughs> Love y'all. Love you too. Love you more. Love y'all too. Huh? Yeah.